Okay, it's the 1st of uh, June in the orchard and uh, this is Megramot Russet and regrettably there's a bad, fairly bad hit of apple scab. I don't know if you can see that on the leaves. Uh, instead of being a beautiful shiny, I mean there's a nice, there's some, some nice new leaves here. Uh, these are beautiful leaves here, nice and clean and green and shiny. And uh, by contrast, here's some uh, leaves which have headed by apple scab. They, they haven't got the shine on them. Uh, They've got all these brown marks. That's a disease called apple scab. Uh, it's on a few of the fruits as well, uh, regrettably. It's a fungal disease. Uh, there are several ways of protecting against scab. Um, growing varieties which are naturally resistant to scab. Uh, regrettably, there are all too few of those. Well, here's um, an apple with some scab on it you can see there's a um, dark mark actually that, that main dark that main mark there is probably a scar from a biting insect of some kind um, but that dirty browny uh, dirty greyish mark that is apple scab now what will probably happen with this apple is that as it grows uh, the damaged skin won't grow and so therefore it will split and a bacteria will get in the apple will die, it will not mature, but if by any chance it did mature and I got it to market, people wouldn't buy it. And there's another apple that's affected by scab. I don't want to give people the impression that, you know, orchard, you know, growing fruit in the orchard is just a, a miserable business. Um, but, you know, there is a the reality there is, um, you know, well, there are a number of diseases. So apple scab, three ways you can minimise it. Uh, one is trying to grow varieties which are resistant, there are too few, research uh, is developing more uh, all the time. If uh, genetic modification uh, will do it, then I will be all for genetic modification. If we can take a gene out of a, a resistant apple and put it into a non-resistant apple so we can get uh, better quality apples which are resistant to scab, then that would be great. Um, plant, you know, decent spacing, good orchard hygiene is all worth doing. So that's another one with a bit of scab on it in the middle there. Um, appropriate pruning to allow air and light through your trees and of course fungicide. And um, basically everybody uses fungicide, even the organic people are allowed to use uh, sulphur and copper, which of course are inorganic uh, and possibly persistent poisons. Um, I don't think, you know, that uh, a fungicide residue is a health issue, uh, but certainly having your um, productivity of uh, your orchard greatly diminished by leaves that are not photosynthesizing correctly, because it's not a cosmetic problem, uh, is a real problem. And as I said before, uh, and I will say again, uh, the main health issue uh, as far as um, uh, pest control is concerned is that if you don't control pests you've got less fruit so that you're missing out on the health benefits of fruit so more research needed but again just um, I know it's a bit sad uh, but uh, anyway we didn't get enough sprays on this year. you can see it's a windy day it's a very windy day again today we were going to be spraying this morning but we couldn't spray we got up at six o'clock but it was already too windy to spray so there you go um, as apple scab I hate it and I if I could press a button and make it extinct, I would do so willingly as I would for many of the other vermin and pests and diseases that diminish our crop.